Hey bro, I really think the Sacramento Kings could make the playoffs this year. Oh, you mean the Los Angeles Kings in the NHL? Yeah, I mean if they improve a little bit. No, I mean the Sacramento Kings. Oh, you were dead serious. Yeah, there's no chance. That was an accurate depiction of what most people are actually saying about the Sacramento Kings this year. But every year seems the same for the Kings. Before the season, they have a decent squad, and everyone thinks this might be the season to break the curse. Halfway through the season, they make a big run and are right outside the playoff picture, or they snag the 8th seed, and everything's looking super promising. But by the end of the season, all hope is lost, and they finish with something resembling of a 35-47 and 47 record. Along the way, they also happen to fire their coach, upset and or trade their best young asset, which all in all disappoints the fan base once again. But this season, the hype seems a little more tangible than usual. Keegan Murray won Summer League MVP and is firmly in the race for a potential Rookie of the Year berth. Random people are betting money for the Kings to win the championship, and even knowledgeable people in mainstream media are vouching for them. So. Could this be the season the Kings finally make the playoffs? Well, let's find out. If you guys enjoy the video and the content I've got over here, consider hitting a like and sub. I'll have new videos coming out at 6 p.m. Central Time on Monday and Thursday every week. So like and subscribe if you don't want to miss any of that. Despite the fact the Kings were 30 and 52 last season, they actually had a pretty good roster. And that roster has gotten even better this season. They've added Malik Monk to play the starting shooting guard position beside his college buddy De'Aaron Fox. Malik is someone who has incredible value as I mentioned in my previous video. He's also very young and coming off a career year, so this was perfect for the Kings. They drafted Keegan Murray who won Summer League MVP and has people really excited. They added Kevin Herter, which I didn't like, but he's still a decent player and he can stretch the floor for the Kings, so it could have been a lot worse. And they essentially added Sabonis this offseason, who now has a full season to show what he's got with the Kings, since he only played around 30 games with them last year, and he looked really good in a pick and roll partnership with De'Aaron Fox. And two other young guys who could really impress this year are Keon Ellis, who they got undrafted on a two-way, and Nemeas Keita, who's also on a two-way. Ellis was one of the most sought after undrafted players this season. He's a tenacious defender and a solid catch and shoot guy from three. And Keita, who is a second year player, could make a jump to a real solid NBA big. He's big and strong with good touch around the rim and has shown occasionally he can step out and shoot the three. All these moves sound good for the Kings, which they are, but they failed to properly address their biggest hole, which is defense. The Kings last year gave up the second most points in the league at 115.8 points per game and they had the third worst defensive rating which was 115.3 and none of those pickups apart from Keon Ellis helped minimize this problem which occurs mostly on the wings and the Kings have next to zero wing defenders. In terms of defense as a whole, the Kings have some good guys like Harrison Barnes, he's really good and helps them out on the wing. But that's about it on the wings, apart from Keon Ellis, who might not get any minutes this season. If we go through the rest of the defenders, Davion is completely elite, Terrence Davis is pretty good, Keegan is supposed to be decent but we're not 100% sure, and Rashawn Holmes protects the paint pretty well. The major problem of defense is in the starting lineup though. The Kings will most likely run a starting five of Fox, Monk, Barnes, Keegan Murray, and Sabonis, or potentially Fox, Barnes, Murray, Sabonis, and Rashawn Holmes, most likely being the first option out of those starting fives. In this lineup, there is really only one good defender, and that's Harrison Barnes, and that's not good enough in this league. But it's something that can be fixed and instilled by a good coach, like newly hired Mike Brown. Brown has spent a number of years in the Warriors system, which prides itself on both ends of the court. This hiring looks like a good one, but don't be so slow to forget the last Warriors disciple that became a Kings head coach, Mr. Luke Walton. So don't get your hopes up. If the Kings though can fix their defensive problem properly and have everyone buy in on the defensive end, they'll be a playoff team. Even if they don't though to a great degree, they have a playoff roster. The problem is, who do they even replace? I think everyone can agree that Golden State, Memphis, Dallas, New Orleans, and Minnesota are absolute playoff locks next season. Then Portland, the Clippers depending on health, Phoenix as well, 
and Denver, depending on their health, could be really scary. That leaves the Lakers, Sacramento, and other teams that could possibly make the playoffs. I believe in Portland, Phoenix should still make it as well. Clippers could be at the top of the West, but health is always a huge question mark. So that really leaves mostly the Lakers, Clippers, Nuggets, and Kings to fight for the 8th seed. I think a play in berth will happen for the Kings next season, but I don't see them making the playoffs. Although it's all based on how they improve defensively and how the young guys develop. It always seems with the Kings there's an imaginary voodoo that surrounds them that makes absolutely everything go wrong. But this season will be a right step in the direction for them regardless if they make the playoffs or even the play-in. And if they improve defensively and the young guys continue to take positive strides, then they could be going somewhere for the first time in 16 long, hard years. If you guys enjoy this video, check out my latest video on the best valued free agent signings of NBA free agency. Like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed. And as always, stay rested. See you in the next one.